Case 5 is a 63-year-old with a history of lung transplant and headache. Here are just some images from an MRA. I'll just go ahead and tell you to ignore this star-shaped artifact in the middle of the image there. Here are some projectional images from that same study. As we're looking at this, I'll point out that these are two different types of MR angiogram. Just keep that in mind. So by now you should be thinking of a probable diagnosis. As I pointed out, there's a key difference between these two images. So kind of think about that, like why these are two images acquired in two different ways. What is the difference? It's a little bit unusual on neuroradiology to have ultrasound, but I do have an ultrasound for you. This is an ultrasound of the neck. All right, so what is the most likely diagnosis? And what is most likely to make the patient's symptoms worse? What we have in this case is a case of subclavian steel. That's an occlusion of the proximal subclavian artery leading to reversal flow in the vertebral artery. So you get reversal of flow from the circle of Willis coming down to supply the arm. And uh, this then steals blood flow from the brain, which can cause symptoms. Here you see these are the two types of images that I was pointing out. On the left, we have a time of flight. Now, time of flight imaging is direction sensitive. So what you see on this is an absence of the vertebral artery on that side. This is a contrast enhanced MRA. So you can tell because the resolution is much better. So the vessels look a lot better. But you see now that this vessel is present, and you also see there's absence of the proximal subclavian here and very poor filling of the artery down the arm here. Finally, we have an ultrasound from this case, and uh, the tech has done something very sneaky here. They've actually changed the direction of insulation, which makes this very, uh, very tricky. What you'll see on this image from the right vertebral artery, which is has a normal forward flow, you see it's red, and you'll see flow towards the transducer, so the insonation is going this way. If you see on this one, the insonation is now away from the transducer. So you see that the red flow is actually going this way, which is towards the feet, so the patient's feet are down here, so on the left vertebral artery you have uh, flow this way. In fact, you see the waveform here is different. So be be careful, like the text will sometimes uh, flip those on you, so be careful, you gotta look at the angle of insonation. So see here it's this way, here it's this way, so uh, be a little careful about that. The answer for our last question is what is most likely to make the patient's symptoms worse? That's gonna be exercising the left arm. When you have vasodilation of the left arm, you're gonna have more steel from the vertebral artery. You're going to get more retrograde flow. You're going to steal blood from the brain, actually, to uh, power that left arm. Theoretically, if you did it in the right arm, you might drop the right vertebral perfusion, but uh, that isn't really the classic history.